crowds numbering about 200,000 on the famous Aintree Racecourse for the Liverpool Spring Meeting. Undismayed by rain and bad visibility, packed in massed ranks to watch the most exciting steeplechase in the world, the Grand National. After their clean-up on the Lincoln, the bookmakers didn't care if it snowed as they called the odds for 47 starters, but the big umbrellas were out, the spectators had to keep out of the rain. There's Mrs. Topham, Managing Director and Secretary of Aintree. Following a dispute about copyright of the broadcast, Mrs. Topham picked her own crew to broadcast the race. And now this newsreel takes you over to the paddock for a preview on some of the runners. Freebooter started favourite at 10 to 1. Roymond is another well-fancied chance. And here's Teal starting at 100 to 7. Inside, out of the wet, 47 jockeys are weighing in before facing the toughest test of nerve of horsemanship and stamina. Behind them lie weeks of training, and in front of them, by way of four and a half miles and 30 grueling jumps, the journey to glory or disaster. A last glance of the race card as the gallant 47 go up towards the start, the last tense moments before the race begins, and for all the weather is so dull and dreary, nothing can kill the glamour of this mighty race. It is the greatest thrill that steeplechasing has to offer, and all eyes are turned towards the start as they line up and wait. Ready to go, and they're off, but no, it's a false start, and those terrible moments of waiting begin all over again. Several minutes delay before the starting tape is repaired. At last, they're in line again, settling down, and they're away, and this time, it's a good one. Like a rolling wave, this gallant band surges on towards jump number one, for many years, the early graveyard of many hopes. The leaders are safely over, but there's trouble coming to the centre ranks. Irish Lizard goes down, and Court Painter, Rock of the Sixth, Hell's Venture the Grey. More early trouble at jump number three, Whispering Steel, into Alia, and Caesar's wife, another grey. Coming up now to the famous and terrible Beecher's Brook. And here our camera goes into slow motion to pinpoint every detail of the danger zone. Teal and Freebooter, What No Son, Lethal Joy, Roymond and Royal Stewart, and a score of others. Almost halfway round on the first lap, and Teal is up in front with Freebooter. Legal Joy is there with Jockey wearing hoops on body and cap. All going well, and all the leaders still keeping close together. Jump number eight is the canal turn. Teal and Freebooter leading. Legal Joy there with Royal Stewart. All the leaders are taking this tricky jump well. But this is where Possible goes out. The ninth jump is Valentine's, another fearsome fence and brook. Slow motion once again shows the same horses tirelessly holding the lead. The field has thinned out, but there's something like 30 runners still in the race. But now you'll see another spectacular nosedive, and that's another delight. Now they're well on the way for the first time round, and still those same leaders are holding the fort against all comers. Teal's in front, but there's a loose horse running dangerously close. A grey, it's Caesar's wife. Jump number 14, you'll see the leaders all come safely over. Only two more jumps to complete the first circuit in this tremendous race of four and a half miles. Still a big field left in to battle it out, but Starlet Bay is out of it. And now they're coming up to the water, and still that grey mare Caesar's wife is running loose beside the leader. Follow the leaders, past the stands to begin the second time round, Teal in the lead. But Caesar's wife is pulling ahead. Too bad she can't win without a rider. Twenty runners still going strong as they come to the first jump of the second lap. There's Teal still in front of Freebooter and Legal Joy. Roymond is there. Now Roymond's down and Menzies. 
Now for the second crack at Beecher's Brook. Teal on the far side has landed badly, but he still goes on. Freebooter has taken the lead. Traveler's Pride is down and out of it. Thundering round to the canal turn for the second time. It's Freebooter, the favorite in the lead. But Teal with Jockey and Spots is coming up fast. It's a terrific race, and anyone can keep going can win. Canal turn. Teal is up again with Freebooter. Coming over with it. Freebooter's down. The favorites hit the deck. Royal Stewart's refused and Icy Cam's pulled up. Only a handful of jumps to go before the finish. It's a fight between J.A. Bullock on Legal Joy and Arthur Thompson on Teal. And what no son and Royal Tan are there to take it over if they fail. Now watch a terrific duel between the leaders coming up to the last two jumps. Teal's in front by inches, but Legal Joy nearest the cameras coming up in a fast challenge. It's a battle royal. The last jump at one, and still it's Teal and Legal Joy being hunted by Royal Tan to a racing finish. Now the last jump of 30. The leader is safely over, but there goes gallant Royal Tan. Tough luck to go out now. What no son takes over third place. The jumping's over, and it's flat from here to the post. And it's Teal that pulls out that extra burst of speed to finish a magnificent race. Teal is forging ahead in front of Dorothy Padgett's Legal Joy to win by five lengths with What No Son third. Teal has won a wonderful race and becomes the champion chaser for 1952. As he comes in towards the stands, they run to give the first congratulations. J.A. Bullock comes up on legal joy to shake the victor by the hand. A gallant second pays tribute to number one. And up comes D.V. Dick on What No Son with his congratulations. This is the most wonderful moment in all the life of Mr. Harry Lane, Teal's white-haired happy owner. For this businessman from Sunderland, it's a triumph of faith and judgment, for Teal was once a lady's hack, once he was sold for a few pounds. Harry Lane bought him and believed in him, and Teal has brought him world fame. Yes, a proud moment for the owner and for Arthur Thompson who rode to well-earned victory. The dark storm clouds have rolled away for jockey and owner. And the local horse that hit the world's headlines takes a great big bow.